Calling the uh, June 13th general government meeting to order. Uh, first up, we need to approve the agenda as presented. Pardon me? Okay. Unless there's any changes uh, to the agenda, I need a motion and support. Move. To approve the agenda. Support. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same. Passes unanimously. Move on to item three. Uh, public comment. Welcome. Name? Peter Bowen. Frank, sir, your lumber. 142 West Pearl Street. Um, I want to speak to the R2PC letter of consistency. This has to do with the Liberty Landfill. As you all know, the Liberty Landfill sits in a U in the uh, upper headwaters of the Grand River. So it's actually surrounded on at least two sides, almost three, um, by <coughs> wetlands and water. And one of the things that has been happening in the upper reaches of the Grand River is there is a great deal of silt over the last few years that I've never seen. And um, it has filled up the river and changed the river's channel. It's this very fine silt. And it even has bothered landowners at the outlet into Vanacook Lake. Um, there's a huge silt bit up there. There's basically mud flats being created. And so I went to the drain commissioner and we looked at the possibilities of where this could be coming from. And he said, well, I mean, JC had some construction and we looked at that and the drain out of there. And I'm like, no. And then the answer is that this silt that is filling up the river has to be coming from the work that's being done out at the Liberty Landfill creating these cells. And the other thing I want to remind all of you about is that the Liberty Landfill receives 100 
tons of coal fly ash out of Ohio every day. Coal fly ash is a very, very toxic substance. Contains lots of heavy metals, it's carcinogenic. If it's actually getting blown and getting into our water, it's terrible for the wildlife, both aquatic and terrestrial wildlife that surrounds the wetland. So I always wanted to see the Liberty Landfill shut down. I would totally admit that. Um, but I want you to consider some of these negative effects that are occurring out there and the long-term possibility that when it's actually closed, we'll, we'll have this poison egg sitting in the middle of the headwaters of the Grand River. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bormuth. Any other public comment? Any other public comment? Last chance. No further public comment. We'll move on to committee items. Uh, first up, uh, 4A are our, our minutes from last month. Get a motion and support to approve the minutes. Move to approve. Support. We have a motion and support. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed the same. Passes unanimously. Next up we have appointments. We have one appointment this month. That's the Employees Retirement System Board. Currently it's filled by a commission. It's a commission position. Currently, it's filled by James E. Shotwell, uh, alias Steve. Uh, Steve has reapplied. Move to uh, move the recommendation to the full board. <coughs> okay, we have a motion to support. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, passes unanimously. A goal to the full board, I believe, next month. Our next meeting. Uh, next up, we have the... 4C, Region 2 Planning Commission Letter of Consistency. Welcome, Grant. Good morning. Good morning. So as I reported at the study committee, uh, <clears throat> the Liberty Environmentalist Landfill reviewed its paperwork for um, Phase 5 of the Liberty Environment Australian Phil and noticed that it never received a letter of consistency uh, with the Jackson County Solid Waste Management Plan for that expansion. Um, they maintain that they got that permission from the Board of Public Works uh, back in 2015 um, regarding the landfill expansion and that the expansion was included in the 2016 amendments to the Solid Waste Management Plan. Consequently, the Liberty Landfill it contacted uh, Jeff Snyder, uh, Chair of the Board of Public Works, um, requesting a letter of consistency. Um, he decided that it should go through the entire uh, siting criteria process outlined in the solid waste management plan and therefore he contacted um, the, the designated planning um, agency and asked staff to put together a, a consistency report um, with a recommendation to the Board of Public Works and that was done with his input um, and presented to the Board of Public Works uh, um, back in May recommending that the proposed expansion is in compliance with the Jackson County Solid Waste Management Plan. Um, the uh, <clears throat> the, uh, uh, the the Board of Public Works uh, uh, Agreed with that um, recommendation and uh, and uh, alerted uh, staff to uh, to send the uh, letter of consistency on to the uh, county board of commissioners for um, approval, and that's where we're at right now. Thank you, Grant. Uh, discussion. Motion, discussion. Okay. Motion. Move to support. We have a motion and support. Motion by Pulaski, supported by Snell. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same. Passes unanimously. Thank you, Grant. Thank you. Next up, we have the Conservation District, item 4D. Welcome, Lori. Good morning. Good morning, how are you? Good, how are you? Excellent. So I'm 
assuming or hoping that everybody got my uh, funding request report. Um, we are asking for funding uh, for the remainder of the 2022 household hazardous waste collection season <clears throat> uh, for the conservation district um, in an amount not to exceed 52,000. Um, this money will help fund, uh, well, I guess it'll pay for, I, I, I submitted a budget, uh, kind of a budget breakdown in the attachments that I sent. Um, basically, we're, we're going to be considered um, all the little, um, all the little things, but the big things are going to be the uh, disposal and transportation of the hazardous waste, and then wages. Most of the wages will be paid for by the per car fee that we're going to assess. Um, so the total we're s estimating, which could change, would be about fifty-eight thousand. Six six thousand of that um, would come for the from the per car fee. Um, I also um, submitted disposal invoices from 2015 to 2021 from ERG, which is the hazardous waste uh, disposal um, company that we use to kind of show you um, the amount that we've taken in and the cost over the years. Uh, we've collected just shy of 275,000 pounds of household hazardous waste since 2015 through our collections. Um, we do not have data from the 2022 collection. We did have one in May, a small one in May. We haven't gotten that uh, information yet from the collector. So I did also submit a cost analysis from um, the pricing list for, that he sent me this year. And you can see, if you look at that, that prices have increased um, significantly. Um, everything, I guess, all prices um, nowadays are increasing. So. Um, for obvious reasons, um, so that's there as well. Um, I don't know if you want me to discuss my report anymore, or if you just want to ask questions. Or I've never asked for money like this before, so okay. questions. Well, I, I do have a question. Okay. On the labor, uh, seventy-three hundred and sixty dollars. That covers how many events? Uh, four. It will cover. That would cover four. Four events. Yeah, so we're hoping we're hoping for that we'd be able to do four events. Okay. If we have one really big event, um, maybe the fourth event won't happen. I mean, if we have money left over, if it, I mean, this is all an estimate because we don't know how much we're going to bring in. We don't know how many people are going to show up. Um, we had one year we had like sixty people show up, but we had instead of the eight thousand we had the month before with the same amount of people, we ended up collecting sixteen thousand pounds of of stuff. So it's 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 going to vary every month. So all of it is an estimate. Okay, is there set hours for the collection? Uh, yeah, uh, we usually we do it between, um, usually it's between uh, 12 and 6. And during a week, during the week, a weekday, um, it's harder to get Saturday help. We'd like to do at least one Saturday collection, though, for the people who can't make it during the week. Come up with the, the uh, labor. Uh, just five people? Yeah, five people. Are you aware that's $60 an hour? N n no, it's all it's twenty five dollars an hour, but there's planning events. There's there's the planning and um, and the actual event days, and we're there longer than the, those hours because we have set up, and then you also have um, takedown and packaging and loading and all that stuff. Okay. So in my calculations, that was it's only twenty five dollars an hour, but we have there's a lot of uh, prep time for it. Okay. I can go do my math again, but I'm pretty sure that's right. <laughs> you need more help? <laughs> okay. At $60 an hour, I'd probably be able to find a lot of help. Okay. Uh, any further questions for Lori? Yes. Motion or discussion? Uh, Mr. Chair, so I'll, I'll move something and then I have a question. Uh, I'll move uh, that we authorize the request, and I, and I do have a question, if I can get a support. Got motion support. Okay. Question, sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. And so the question really is, I think, for administration is whether administration has seen and approved this uh, budget amendment. I have. And that's all I need to know. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We have a motion and support. All in favor of uh, this project indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same. Passes unanimously. Okay. Thank you. Is there more you needed to say? No, I was just going to say, if, if th at the end of the collection season, if we do have leftover money, I would like to 
um, do like a kind of for the ag community do like a, another scrap tire for like tractor tires and and stuff so I, I have plans for if there's extra money if there's if we go over a little bit um, the conservation district does have a little cushion to help cover any extra that we might need to to put but um, ag plastics and ag tires are a big deal so if there's any leftover money I was hoping that it would go towards that valuable program all right thank you. so thank you very much next up uh, for E Treasurer's report welcome madam treasurer good morning commissioners so you should have the report that I sent uh, via email on June 3rd. And there's a lot of information that you may not find valuable. I, I spend a lot of time putting information on the My Half program because I think right now it's, it's being severely underutilized. So I want to educate all of you so that when you're speaking with your constituents that you can tell them about this program because this program really is more comprehensive um, than the Step Forward Michigan because as you will see in the information I included, it talks about del paying delinquent water and sewer bills. Um, and the Step Forward program never did that. It only concentrated on delinquent taxes. So I spent a good chunk of my report really highlighting the details of that program for you. And obviously, if you have questions, don't hesitate to reach out to our office. Um, and the quick answer when you're talking to your constituents is tell them to call 211. That's the United number 211. And they have access to all of these resources as well. You know, I take a big responsibility. Part of my job is education and connecting people to resources. So I'm giving you this information so that you'll pass it on to the people that you come in contact with with the hope to prevent foreclosure. Um, so the report starts out with some details. I kind of went back to the beginning of the year because my March report to you was my annual report, so that kept um, capitalized all of the details and information from last year's activity. So just to give you a flavor as to where we were uh, for 2022, there's just the update on our show cause hearing numbers, our judicial foreclosure numbers, um, and again, you'll see the my half information. We are getting dollars from my half. Um, it's like a trickle right now. I'd like to see more dollars coming in because as you can see, there's what, $242 million that were awarded to the state. I'd like to see some of those dollars coming in helping people for Jackson County. So um, you'll see there on page three, here's the updated, we had 31 homeowners apply for the program. We've applied received and applied 66,000. We just received notification today that we've got two more that are in the portal. So like I said, it's a trickle. Um, people are still getting the word and figuring out what the program can and cannot do for them. But um, help us spread the word to help prevent foreclosure because this can be a valuable uh, resource. On page three, I wanted to take a moment to talk about something that was pretty significant in my uh, experience as the county treasurer. March 2022 was our largest month of collections in our history. Um, and there were several factors that contributed to that. Um, generally speaking, when we get the new round of taxes that could get turned over to us March 1st from the locals, anything that was not collected at the local unit gets turned over to us March 1st. We're in the process of settlement at that point in time. Um, and we've always focused our attentions on getting settlement finished so that we could get those tax records into our system. Um, this year we kind of flipped the script and we sent out notices almost immediately when we got those taxes because what we have found is that people, for whatever reason, they forget that they had a winter tax bill. Uh, so a lot of those taxes that come turned over to us from the local unit is something similar to that, where they forgot to pay their winter tax bill. So rather than let it sit with us and continue to accrue interest, right, and uh, make their bill bigger, we sent out a notice al almost immediately, and that really was the huge uptake. We uh, uptick in number as far as people coming through our doors, people using the online portal. So we got the money faster, which takes it takes those parcels out of our cycle, so it's less work that we have to do with as far as the fourth forfeiture cycle and the foreclosure cycle to collect. So it was a win-win, but um, yeah, we were, it was astonishing how much traffic we had. Um, to the good, you'll see our, our, our total collections was just over three million, and that's it's usually about a million dollars, so it was about two million dollars more. So that was good. Good news. We'll take it. 
So our, now we're to the point in the cycle where we talked about January, we talked about February, talked about March settlement, and then obviously another date um, that's real big for our office is March 31st, which is our foreclosure deadline date. So you'll see that I did a bullet point showing you what our total number was this year. I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed that we got to 120 parcels. I was trying to get under 100 parcels again this year, like uh, last year we had 76. Um, and I wanted to make sure that you knew that it's not all houses and people being displaced. We had more vacant properties that came through and that we foreclosed on. And I wanted to take a minute to really um, make that known, make that a highlight point. So 34 more vacant parcels this cycle. And it happens. We have um, parcels that we foreclose on from previous years, and people pick them up at the minimum bid auction, thinking they're going to turn them around, flip them, um, maybe contact uh, land adjacent land owners to see if they can sell those usually undesirable vacant lots. Um, and eventually when they don't either put the effort to sell them, or realize that there's no money to be gained in those parcels, they let them re revert and we end up foreclosing on them again. So that's what happened. And generally speaking, we see anywhere between 7 to 10 percent uh, parcels re revert every cycle. So this isn't anything new, it just happened that this was a bigger blip than we've seen in years past. So, um, yeah, I highlighted that Blackman Township had 16 vacant parcels and that was one owner. So it was one owner that bought 16 vacant parcels and didn't do anything with them, got tired of paying the taxes, and let them foreclose on again. So, All right. And then I wanted to take a minute to talk about Public Act 255 and 256. As you should all be aware, that is the new legislative changes that um, affects surplus proceeds. There's some details there for you. We're still in that timeline. The statutes outline um, deadlines that claimants need to meet. Um, so I wanted to bring you up to speed as to where we are. We had um, seven valid claims filed, and what I mean by valid is that they followed the letter of the statute and completed their filing by the deadline, before the deadline. Uh, we had other people that filed after the deadline. I don't necessarily consider those valid claims, but that's not for me to determine, that's for the judge to determine. But just, that's why I wanted to let you know that's what I consider valid. It's They followed the state, state statute and uh, applied and filed by that deadline. Um, so we've got some court dates that are coming and we have one, I've received one order from the court uh, for our first payout. And that is just under $13,000 for one of the claims. So we're in the process of uh, processing that. We've got 21 days to issue a check uh, to that claimant um, per the new statute. And we've got others that are in the pipeline uh, for the hearings. And I will update when we receive what happens and or court orders so um, but as I've indicated in here the ma maximum exposure that we are having to deal with this year because of the foreclosures in this new law is under 150,000 so that's good news in and of itself um, and so this will change how I report my information out to you. I think it's very important to continue this discussion about exposure, potential exposure. Obviously, it's going to change every year, depending on the number of parcels that foreclose and the number of claimants that file to trigger that process. I'll continue on unless there's questions. Okay, Mr. Administrator. Karen, the... This 147, is this all the past claims brings us up to date? And so every year we just have potential new ones. So we have some ex still some exposure from the past. When is any sense of when that will be determined? So very good question. And it does need to be stated that this is tracking about um, the 2020, um, 2021 foreclosures. So anything prior to 2021, as I'm sure you are aware, there's multitude of pending claims all throughout Sixth Circuit District Court all the way up to the, I think we're getting to the Supreme Court. There's some appeals. When I mean a multitude, I'm talking at least 20 
20 to 25 cases and it's scattered through all, all throughout the state of Michigan. So there's a tremendous amount of plant pending litigation that specifically addresses the retroactivity of the Supreme Court decision, Raffaele. So they're still in progress. We're getting, uh, we meet bi-monthly, our legislative group through the Michigan Association of County Treasurers. We're working with legislative council, um, legal council, and they give us updates as to the status of those, but we're, we're at the mercy of where things go through the court systems. They're trying, there's some judges that are trying to consolidate some of these cases, since it's all the same subject matter. Um, but we do not have an answer as to exposure for the retroactivity part of it. Um, it's still right in the middle of all that litigation. So um, yes, there's a potential to what degree. Um, big numbers, depending on how far back the court makes their final ruling. If they go back one or two years, obviously the exposure is not as great. If they go back to the beginning of um, one of the cases, Wayside Church, then that's back to 2011. That'll have more of an in impact on the exposure. And again, um, don't have much information other than just to tell you that's the status of where we are right now. Chairman Chatwell? Do we have any direct cases, or is this all class, class work that's going on? Do we have any that are in it specifically in Jackson County? Jackson County has not been named. Uh, with a plaintiff for any of these matters, but that doesn't mean that the attorneys have tried to sweep all of the oh, county yeah. treasurers in the state of Michigan through the class actions uh, suits, and there have been some class action suits that have been certified. So uh, the one that impacts Jackson County the most significant, significantly is the Fox case, and I know um, Administrator Overton does get regular updates on the, the legal status of where those cases are, are moving through the courts. So, um, but no, Jackson does not have a, a plaintiff as of yet. Doesn't mean that there won't be someone that gets found uh, through their legal attorney research, but um, so yes. Any other questions with regard to that? Just stay tuned. I'll keep you apprised of any latent breaking information with regard to that. Um, so some other good news, I think, is that as we now are in our forfeiture cycle, that our numbers are down significantly, about 400 parcels um, as compared to this time last year, which is also a good thing because I think that goes back to our why our march was so busy, all of those people were paying those taxes off. So we have less numbers going through the cycle, less people being impacted uh, with um, delinquency uh, of property taxes, so that's always a good thing. And actually today, we are under 1,000, we're at 985. So the number keeps uh, dwindling down. It's June, mid-June, uh, the staff will be out in the field making contact with all of these taxpayers probably the third week in July doing a required uh, statutory first personal service visit where we go to the properties that have delinquent taxes, knock on the door and hand them a notice and talk to them about resources, make sure they're aware that the taxes are due and owing. So um, it's our first uh, real contact with um, that parcel um, and we learn a lot of information on those, on those visits. Um, so we will be doing that in July. So if you hear of any activity going on in your townships, that's probably our office notifying those people impacted. If I could, Karen. Yes. Going back to 2021, when are people supposed to have vacated the property, or do we not remove renters from something that a landlord is being foreclosed on? Are we talking about the par property you and I had a conversation about? I'm talking about another one on South Jackson Road. I noticed that there was a dog tied up there and people still there. But you've got signs out front, 30, 39, and 30, 40. South Jackson. Are your designated signs? Well, it would have been a property we foreclosed on in 2022. Because okay, well, I, either way, the, the the auction signs are there right now. Yes, yes. But I do see a I do see an animal tied up out there. That's why I wondered. Then we will make sure that my crew goes over there because they they go and check these properties that we foreclosed on at least two every two weeks, yes. if not more. They're mowing it, making sure the properties are secured. If there's animals that are left behind, we also want to know about that too. Okay. South so, Jackson, a dog. So we asked the renter to move out, and we seal up the property. Is that what you're saying? 
Generally speaking, yes. Okay. COVID happened. And as you are aware, there was a you know federal eviction moratorium. And our past practice for my office was yes. When we foreclosed, we would go visit the properties, make contact if there were renters. We gave them a 30-day notice, notice to quit, uh, and gave them time to do that. If they weren't out, then we took them to the court and went through the eviction process. COVID hit, we stopped that process. We stopped that um, that procedure, and we actually have not done that again. And I think we have maybe one or two renters in this foreclosure cycle, cycle that we've had to deal with. Um, and the property that we were talking about just vacated on Saturday. Yeah. So we had people there moving and cleaning up the property, removing so a lot of junk material, which was a good thing, yep. not at our cost, at their cost. So the only one that I was aware of was the Schilling property that had a renter in there. But we will certainly check out South Jackson. So thank you for letting me know that. Sure. Yeah. But it is our goal to make sure that the properties are vacated. Um, but it gets a little tricky. We're trying to respect people in the time of COVID. Um, so we're not as aggressive, I guess I'll say, doing the full evictions like we have in the past. No, I understand. I I just wanted to, I wanted to understand where we were post COVID. Yeah, post COVID, we went and visited the properties the second week in April. Made contact with all structures, secured those that needed to be dis, uh, secured, um, and then again we had the contact and we gave them 30 days verbally to um, remove the things from their premises on the showing property. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, two more updates, and I'll I'll. Uh, be available for questions. I wanted to update you on Mechanic Street property. As you all should be aware, it is now on the national priorities listing. And good news is we received an email from the EPA. They're coming back in town. So I'm very excited about that. We actually meet on site tomorrow um, at noon. So I'm not sure what it's going to look like um, when the EPA was here last time doing the emergency cleanup. Obviously, the, there was a different protocol. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how they approach it from the Superfund um, NPL perspective. But are you going to try to join us? I'm going to make every effort. OK. Uh, Mike and I were talking about that today Good. already. Good. Um, and as we've had conversations utilizing the county brownfield and the city brownfield, I think will be key parts to this conversation and moving this property forward and, and hopefully getting the structures down. I'll continue to say that because that's what I think is the best use of the property. But um, So I wanted you to be aware of that. But there has been ongoing activity on that property as well. Um, Eagle, which is our state um, DEQ, they have been on premises at least monthly doing groundwater sampling. So there has been activity on the property. There's been sampling done, testing done all along. So um, I didn't want you to think that it's just sitting there. It's, it's an eyesore, I know that, and we're doing what we can to, to do the right thing and get it cleaned up and hopefully get it down. And then lastly, I just wanted to update legislatively, uh, Commissioner Snell presented to all of you a resolution at the study session highlighting H. Bill 4730. It's, uh, they call it the zero bill package of bills. Um, I just want to make sure that um, you hear it directly from me as a county treasurer. The county treasurers are um, strongly opposing this legislation, but it's not because it's an access to information issue. That's not the issue. What Zillow is asking in this legislation is to be special, to be separate. They're a private entity asking for taxpaying government information. I'll say that again, a private company wanting special consideration to have access to taxpayer, because the taxpayers fund our office, and the collection of all that data therein, um, they want access to that carte blanche. Um, so there's some language in the, um, I don't know if it's uh, Freedom of Information Act, but qualified data file is kind of the, the key catchphrase in all of that. And that's what Zillow is saying. Well, Zillow is, does not understand that government has silos and compartments. 
The county treasurer's office may have some of that information that Zillow is requesting, request, uh, requesting, but does not have all of that information. Most of the information that they're requesting is property card assessment information. Anything related to the assessment of the property, which is handled from the local level. Um, there's also some information that the equalizations departments throughout the state of Michigan collect. So. What, enhance, what they're asking us to do is to be the data collector for them so that they can have this information for their private use. We have a problem with that. Um, it's not a matter of getting the information. That's not it. But we are not the sole holder of that information. Um, and I will say that if you haven't heard it from um, Mr. Snell, um, um, Mard, it's not MDARD. Mard, uh, Register of Deeds are opposed to this. Last time, MAC was opposed to this. So um, there's a better way to write access to information legislatively. And we're working with um, our legislative group is meeting with Rep. Uh, Julie Kelly tomorrow to hopefully um, go backwards, albeit, to try to um, come to something that's more palatable, more agreeable. Um, to help Zillow rather than make uh, all of this fall on the um, shoulders of the county treasurers to collect and then disseminate this information. So hopefully that provides a little more clarity as to the understanding of why we're strongly um, opposing it. And I would appreciate your support on this resolution coming from Jackson County. I will tell you that we are in the process of collecting similar resolutions in opposition for many counties throughout the state right now. Um, so I would love to see Jackson County support that. Um, if you've got questions, you need further information, don't hesitate to reach out to me. Um, if I don't know the answer, I can find out from our legislative crew who are talking to the lobbyists and the reps directly on that. So um, I've talked too long, but that is all I have to present unless you have questions for me. Thank you. Excellent report. You're welcome. Good morning. So um, I am here to talk about April. <clears throat> I know if you kind of take a look at our benchmarks, we are a little bit above our benchmarks for expenditures. And of course below for our revenues but as I'll explain going through a report that is expected um, so if we go ahead and turn to page two um, as you can see to the each of the other categories we are below our benchmark the ex, um, expenditures are where we, we expected for April but if you do turn to page three um, our other category is 49.3 percent and transfers out or 37.2 but the explanation for the other is we had to pay our second insurance payment for our umbrella. It's like almost $300,000. And then our transfers out, we're just paying debt services. So, but the good news is if you look at last year, we're at 33.7%. So we really are within the cap, um, right where we need to be for April with our expenditures. Um, <clears throat> really good news, if you turn to page four, um, our where our percentage is 18.4% 18 18 for general fund. Last year was at 18%. So our revenues collection is, is higher compared to last year. Um, so yeah, there, I, don't, I don't have any concerns or any, are there any questions anyone has for April? Thank you. Hello. Thank you for having me today. Uh, so I submitted my report on Board Docs, and you can see that there. It is a shortened version. We do a more thorough report in January. I'm just keep really quick today, as I know we have a full agenda. Um, so what I want to focus on instead of the numbers, because because those are all really, really comparable to what we've been doing. We're a busy office. You all know that. But I want to give kudos to our staff. So 
On Friday, as I was opening the doors to our office, a gentleman walked in and he said, I just want to say thank you. Thank you guys for providing such a great service. Every time I come into this office, you all treat me so kindly, you're so nice, and you're very efficient. And I thought that was very kind. We don't always get that kind of thing. So I wanted to share that with you. And then also on Friday, received an email uh, regarding one of our, our vital staff that said that our vital staff, uh, this particular person that had helped this woman, was, quote, helpful, patient, and determined to find the information she was asking for. So I thought that was good news as well. Um, one of the things I wanted to highlight was we did go through a uh, audit in March, and that was a full week, and that was the state court administrator's office. They went through all of our financials, they went through our files, and there was no concerns, there was no immediate action that needed to be done. Uh, so we were very happy with that initial finding. We are still waiting for that report, which we'll present to you when that is ready. The other thing I wanted to point out was the restitution. So our office has been working harder than normal, uh, thanks to our assistant, Chief Deputy Guthrie, to um, find addresses for victims and to make sure that that restitution is paid out and does get to them. So you can see our numbers are, are typically higher than they would be this, this time of year. Um, we went through with elections, ballot proofreading, uh, our candidates and proposals are on our website and they are updated if you'd like to view them there. And of course, jury has been busy as well. Uh, so far from, I think, February to May, we've called 30 different jurors and juror pools, excuse me. So with that, any questions? No? Any questions for the clerk? Mm -hmm. So this item is a renewal. Um, it goes back to our CDBG um, grant funds. Um, we are no longer eligible to receive the grant funds. However, we have to. Um, we have about 70 homes still that have liens on them from this funding that it stopped several years ago. Um, so we have to account for those funds. And Community Action Agency, we have an agreement with them. They were the original administrator of the funding for us. And so we're continuing that relationship so that they collect the funds and forward them to us. Um, we have to approve, or we don't have to, we have to. We have an agreement with them um, in the past. Since we no longer receive the money, they aren't required to be the administrator of the funds anymore. So um, they've agreed to keep going and with that relationship um, if we pay them an 8% administrative fee of the funds that come in. So if somebody sells their house or they make a payment on the loan that was given to them years ago, um, Community Action Agency collects that funds for us. They keep 8% and forward the rest to us. And then we have to account for that on our end. Um, Cecilia's office actually has to do a quarterly report on the funds that come in. So this is just a renewal of that 8% administrative fee agreement that we've had ongoing with Community Action Agency. I move to uh, recommend approval to the full board. Is it uh, under whose power would any of these liens be released? Um, it's actually the liens are placed on the homes so if the if there's a change of ownership whether it be through um, a death or a sale or a foreclosure um, we only release typically if there's a foreclosure of the the property if there's a death or a sale of the property um, then that would the sale of the property we get the funds um, but people can voluntarily make a payment we don't get a lot of those but people voluntarily make a payment sometimes but it's still under the county's responsibility to make any lien releases, not community action agencies. Correct. Is that right? okay. Correct. Yep. Mike has to sign off on those. Those Perfect. come to Mike. Thank you, Mr. Chair. That that takes care of my question. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Reading through the uh, agreement between County Action Agency and County of Jackson, uh, 
So the Community Action Agency is a nonprofit corporation. And uh, this agreement has our administrator, um, as I see it, working for them. Uh, our administrator would receive payments, submit monies collected, record any changes, uh, assisting county with the required reporting to the state, um, compensation the county shall in each year of this agreement is in effect compensate the administrator for the services provided pursuant to this agreement by allowing the administrator to retain 8% of the total money collected each quarter. So the administrator um, in the very first paragraph the administrator is community action agency not us in the third line at the very top. <clears throat> okay. So the Community Action Agency, a nonprofit organization, is going to be collecting these. Um, why are we, what's our financial obligation here? Our financial obligation, we have to account for the funds. We are obligated until all of the loans are paid off to the federal government or the state government to account for these CDBG grant funds. That's our obligation. So the county is just doing the bookkeeping on these funds? We submit the quarterly reports. Community Action Agency in this agreement does the bookkeeping for us. They send us the numbers. They send us who made payments. They send us all that information. They do any lien. Uh, termination paperwork they do all that for us and then Cecilia's office takes that information and submits their quarterly report as required okay so what is the who's the originator on these loans where's the money coming from the money has been closed we aren't receiving any money um, the grant was many many years ago I've got some dates in the staff report so we no longer receive this money. The city does as an entitlement community. The city still receives the money, but the county does not. We haven't received it in, I think it's been eight, 10 years. It's been quite some time, but we have to account for the funds until they're all gone. And when they're all gone, will be all the liens removed from the homes, whether it be through payment or sale or removal of liens, whatever that might look like. Okay, so the city is still eligible to participate in this. The county is not. Correct. But the county is obligated to do this bookkeeping and reporting. We are obligated to submit quarterly reports, and as a result for those quarterly reports, we have bookkeeping that's required um, and payments that are being made that we have to keep track of. So Community Action Agency has agreed to do that bookkeeping for us and accept those payments, do the lien stuff, um, on our behalf for this 8% administrative fee of whatever is paid. So if there's no payments, there's no money. So it's just based on what payments come in and what, what's paid off. It's just incoming money. Okay, thank you. That explanation is helpful for me. Okay, we had a motion and support. Any more questions first? Okay, we had a motion and support. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same. Passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Move on to item 4i, equalization. We must approve uh, an annual millage request. Good morning. So this is pretty simple. It's uh, the millage request form that comes through. Um, every tax collecting authority has to fill one out. Um, and for us, it's less a request and more of a, what do we intend to do? Because the request is to the um, County Board of Commissioners. So what are we intending to levy in the summer so we can get that off to the local treasurers so they can put it on the tax bill? Um, anybody have any questions? Questions? Okay, if we have no questions, I need a motion and support to send this uh, to the full board. Go ahead, Tony. This is a list of the various millages that are collected from our residents, our taxpayers. Right. The millage that the, 
that Jackson Community College receives. Uh, why is that not included in this list? Uh, the community college is its own millage rate. That does not come through the county. So they'll fill out their own. Um, this is just the county's millages. So not that will all appear on your tax bill, but just the ones that are specifically voted in for the county and the county's operating. Okay, because that's a... So all of your local units, they all have to fill out the same form, which will come in the apportionment report in October, um, to request the commissioners to approve that. This is just saying, hey, this is what we're collecting in the summer um, for the county, our operating, um, to let the local units know what to put on the tax bill. No problem. Commissioner uh, Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion to um, recommend this to the full board, and then if I get support, I have a question. Support. Okay, motion Pulaski, supported yeah. Alexander. Go ahead with your question, please. I just want to make sure I'm look, taking a look at this. I think notable by his absence is uh, the jail millage. Is that correct, that it is not listed as something we're going currently going to assess? Is that right? Right. It's, it's currently not available. So once it gets voted in, we will be required to amend this. Um, but we have to get it out to the summer, um, for the summer levy of taxes for operating, which we traditionally do in the summer. I, I guess I just wanted to make sure we were all clear that that thing has expired and it's not on the list. It's expired and it, it can't be on there, yes. Okay, thank you, sir. No problem. That's all I have, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, and we proceed to vote. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed the same. Passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Joseph. Uh, item 4J, facilities. Welcome, Rick. Good morning, Mr. Chair, Commissioners. Once, I come, once again, I come to you hat in hand with some ARPA requests. The first one we have up is the elevator modernization project for multiple buildings. Um, basically here at the tower building we have two original elevators that no longer run. Uh, they're 93 years old. Our freight elevator, our main freight elevator that goes up to the 15th floor hasn't run now in three weeks. Uh, they can't seem to figure out what exactly is wrong with it so they're trying they're going to have to bring in an engineer and see what the heck's going on with it but again it's antique technology uh, the same thing with but not quite as bad with the freight elevator at the human services building every time it breaks down the parts are obsolete and have to be custom manufactured to get it back in business I move to uh, forward this on to the full board with a recommendation to pass it. Who supported that? I did. Okay. Motion by Snell, supported by Walls. All in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. Oh, go ahead. Wait a minute. Hang on, we're not voting yet. Go ahead. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, uh, as noted in the study session, um, I with respect to these four items that Rick is speaking of today. I'm fully in support of doing them, uh, but we'll be voting against any further uh, obligation of ARPA monies until we get the report with respect to uh, our building facilities. Uh, I appreciate very much the work staff has done. It's not a reflection on them, but a reflection on my desire to see what we're going to do uh, as to future buildings. Thank you, sir. And I would request a, a roll call vote. A roll call vote. Walls. Yes. Three two. Uh, passes three to two, but we need a report. 
Okay, next up, 4K. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Again, we're having problems with roof leaks at the courthouse. It's been ongoing. We've been chasing these leaks for a long time. Uh, we've gone through and researched the best system to rehabilitate the roof as opposed to stripping it off and replacing it. Basically, we'll be getting a whole new roof system with a 20-year warranty in place. Uh, we've gone as far as we can go with chasing the roof leaks. It's You fix it in one spot, and it's leaking somewhere else. It just, it, it, yeah. So we did have a question from Commissioner Bear on how the parapets would be addressed, and I'm going to have uh, my associate Derek address that. So the existing turn bar stays in place, and they have their own uh, patented technology for. Uh, for parapet walls in general and masonry. So they will encapsulate the current term bar and take this acrylic coating all the way up to the bottom of that cap that we discussed. So in the long run, they will repair what needs to be repaired and then seal it all up so there's no future problems with the masonry. You're welcome. Okay, any more discussion on the roof? Okay. Uh Need a motion and support to do the three hundred eighteen thousand dollar courthouse roofing project plus a ten percent contingency. So moved. Motion by Walls. Do I have a support? I'll support it. Uh, Request roll call vote. Roll vote. Mr. Chair, do we have uh, discussion? Pardon me? Okay, what? Okay, go ahead. Um, I'll be joining uh, Commissioner Pulaski in voting no uh, for the same reason. Uh, not that I don't think these projects uh, need to be done or that there's no merit to getting them done, but uh, this is a report that we've asked for and asked for, and I just want to see what the numbers look like. Thank you. Might I ask? We passed these three today, and we just won't accept any more projects until we get the report. Let him keep working. Just we'll table anything that comes forward. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, certainly, um, I, my my objection is not related to the merits of the work that needs to be done. I have no question, but it needs to be done. I would cheerfully vote for it once we've seen the report that we've asked for, I think, a number of times. And I think we've been um, uh, patient enough thus far. Um, I'll, I'll still be a no. Thank you, sir. Okay. Um, a, a, a separate request here, or not a separate, but on the same topic. We have some seasonal work that we have to complete on the building that's coming up. Okay, we'll just go ahead and vote on this thing. Roll call. Commissioner Pulaski? No. Commissioner Alexander? No. Commissioner Snell? No. Commissioner Walls? Yes. Commissioner Chair Duckham? Yes. 3-2. Three. Three, failed, 3-2. to two. Okay, we'll go on to uh, item 4L, facilities, tower <coughs> building, masonry repairs. You want to tell us what you need, Rick? I need to fix the tower building with the masonry repair. This is stuff that can't wait, guys. We need to do it. And if we don't do it, we're going to have problems in the spring during the freeze-thaw season. So I, I really don't have anything more to say on this. When can we get a report? When can we get the information they've requested? Go ahead. That, that's, that's not on Rick. That's on me. We're working on that. 
uh, with Region 2. Same as I indicated uh, at study session. Okay. Uh, we would probably have it by now, but the jail propped up and we had to work on the jail first. All right. Discussion. Are we going to vote on this? Tony. A uh, question for the administrator. Uh, what kind of report is this being requested? What's the nature of this report? Uh, what's uh, the, the report? The nature of the report is what are we doing with our buildings? The question primarily has been can we close any of our buildings? Uh, the idea being that uh, what has been discovered through COVID across our nation is that a lot of people can work from home. Uh, we have a number of examples in our own community where uh, consumers or Henry Ford has administration a number of people working from home and therefore they have half empty buildings uh, does that uh, apply to the county can we do the same can we consolidate and close the building and uh, you know we were in the throes of looking at all, all our buildings and, and frankly we've been running in parallel uh, with that with the jail uh, but that report is not ready for public consumption at this point uh, we're focused on the jail which should be coming to a close pretty soon because well, the jail's, you know, time got a timeline, a hard date of uh, August. So we'd like to resolve the jail in July and then go forward. Phil. 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 Commissioner, uh, Chair Shotwell. <coughs> While we just decided not to repair the roof in the courthouse, I'll, we'll be able to figure something out, I'm sure. I would ask this committee to give no recommendation and just forward this to the full board and please allow all nine commissioners to be able to make these decisions instead of it being ended here on a building that we're going to continue to operate, the tower building, which is going to have masonry and stonework possibly, which we've witnessed in recent history, fall off and put the citizenry at risk. I think that the proper and correct move while you have voiced clearly your opposition to this I would ask that you forward these to the full board with no recommendation please so we all can have a chance to consider this thank you uh, Commissioner Pulaski uh, thanks Mr. Chair and to the chair's uh, suggestion I move to reconsider the vote by which we uh, turned down the earlier suggestion I'll support that Go ahead, Tony. A vote to reconsider can only be made by a person who voted in the affirmative for the original motion. It, it, I voted with majority. I think that the rule is not majority or minority. It has to be someone that voted in the affirmative, voted yes. Someone that voted no cannot ask to reconsider. Someone that voted yes must make the motion to reconsider. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chair, I would ask the administrator to rule on the uh, parliamentary issue being raised. I, I think um, my motion is in order. Thank you. Uh, we defer to? Uh, in all honesty, I believe it is in order as well. I think um, we're confusing well, it. The winning side. Exactly. It's not a yes or no. It's who prevailed. No, I do not believe that is correct at all, and that is because someone who loses a vote can just move to reconsider, lose again, move to reconsider, lose again. Well, so no, the I parliamentary think, procedure is it must be someone that voted in the affirmative. I think you just made your point, Tony. He, sure. He was, the, the three people who voted prevailed. So they didn't lose, they prevailed. Well, Mr. I'll tell you what, we can check with um, our you know, legal counsel. On I, I have the policy up right now. Okay, go if ahead. I, if I may, Mr. Chair. A member shall have the right to move reconsideration of any question on which the member voted with the prevailing side. A question may be reconsidered at the same or succeeding meeting, but shall not be considered more than twice. And this is the rules of the Board of Commissioners, policy number 4050, article 5. So we vote. You okay 
it now, Tony? We're good? Do you agree we get to vote? The prevailing side gets to call for a... Okay, uh, we will vote on item 4L, tower building masonry repairs first because it was... I was going to finish what we was doing. Okay. Okay, I'd like to uh, make a motion. Okay, we we got the motion made? Okay. Uh, we'll roll call vote. Motion to reconsider. Commissioner Alexander? Yes. Commissioner Snell? Yes. Commissioner Walls? Yes. Commissioner Pulaski? Yes. Commissioner Chair Duckham? Yes. Passes. Okay, then we're going back and we're going to revote on item 4K facilities, courthouse roof repair. Need a motion and support. We're getting where I I'll move it. Okay, move. I'll support. Roll call vote on the. Uh, discussion first, please. Go ahead. Um, and, and, and I appreciate uh, Chairman uh, Shotwell's position, and, and I kind of agree with him too, but I think some of us are very adamant about needing to be able to see that report so that we can make decisions based off that report. Um, and, I, and I won't say that everything we see behind us seems to, or in front of us seems to be willy-nilly. And I know these things are important, but it's also important that we have the documentation in front of us in order to make the proper decisions. Thank you. Proceed to vote. Commissioner Snell? Yes. Sorry. Commissioner Walls? Yes. Commissioner Pulaski? No. Commissioner Alexander? No. Commissioner Chair Duckham? Yes. 3 2. Okay. The facility <clears throat> facilities will have the authority to move forward the, the uh, courthouse roofing improvement. That's what that vote is for. We'll go return to item L facilities tower barrel building masonry repairs. Add a motion in support. Move to recommend or without recommendation. The um, that this be sent to the full board. Okay, roll call vote. Well, we have a motion in support. I'll support. Or oh, don't I'll, I'll support it. Motion in support. Roll move forward with roll call vote. Commissioner Walls. Yes. Commissioner Pulaski. Yes. Commissioner Alexander. Yes. Commissioner Snell. Commission Chair Duckham. Yes. Motion passes. Going to the full board. Move forward now to item 4M. Uh, human facilities item. Uh, human services building roofing improvement. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This roof system is in the same shape as the courthouse, specifically the section of the building that runs from east to west. The configuration of the former medical care facility is in a T formation. The stem of the T has been repaired over the years. We we're just down to the last portion of it. This last portion of it is also where 911 is. It's also where the health department's clinics are. It's and this was slated to be done a few years ago when we lost all of our capital funding because we had to build a morgue. So this is the shape that we're in. We have to do this or not. I mean, it's certainly up to you all, but at the end of the day, it makes sense to get this last part of the building taken care of. Thank you. So we're requested to approve a contract, or uh, Rick, to proceed with a contract with Lutz Roofing, 
for $423,950 with a 10% contingency. This is using ARPA money. I need any discussion we need. If not, any, go ahead. Go ahead. Mr. Chair, I'll move. Uh, so motion by Pulaski, supported by Snell. Roll call vote, please. Commissioner Pulaski? Yes. Commissioner Alexander? No. Commissioner Snell? Yes. Commissioner Walls? Yes. Commissioner Chair Duckham? Yes. 4 1. Passes 4 to 1. Thank you, Rick. Sorry. Thank you, Commissioners. Move on to 4 N. Parks. Welcome, Kyle. I know you're behind that pillar. Yeah. Good morning. Thank you. Okay, this first item, uh, the Parks Board formed a subcommittee back in January to uh, study the bylaws of the Parks Board uh, to get them in line with some changes that have occurred over the years, um, specifically the supervision of the Parks Director as well as the uh, Public Act uh, that, that was changed in 2018. So this is essentially just to get it in line with some approved changes that have happened over the last uh, decade or so. Okay. Discussion on the uh, revised bylaws for the park. Do you have any discussion? Do we have a motion? I move to approve. Support. Do we have a motion and support. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same. Nothing. Passes unanimously. Uh, you have your bylaws. Move on to park item 4O. Parks, uh, Alfred R. Snyder County Park Playground Purchase. Yeah, and this was actually a project we had planned for 2020, but there's um, some funding uh, partnership with Lomar Machine and Tool. Um, so they, due to the pandemic, they kind of wanted to back off back in 2020, um, but we revisited it uh, recently. So they're chipping in uh, 20000 towards this playground. Um, again, it's, uh, it's part of our capital plan. Uh, we do have uh, uh, funding available for this project. Um, I think I include some pictures of the existing playground out there, so this will be quite, a, quite an improvement for this park. Nice looking playground. Discussion? We have a motion by uh, Lusky, uh, support by Walls. Uh, proceed to vote. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed the same? Passes unanimously. Move on to another park item, Falling Water Trails Improvement. So if you recall, last fall we did some uh, major crack uh, repairs on the Falling Waters Trail between Teft and Moscow. That was kind of a phase one uh, project. And this is essentially the phase two of that. So uh, last fall we removed this, uh, the major cracks and put in new asphalt. Uh, this is an asphalt overlay to, uh, to, to go over where those crack repairs are made. Uh, we had 100000 designated for trail improvements this year as part of our, our parks capital budget. Um, we put this out to bid. We actually got four bids back, which was um, good news. Not the case with uh, a lot of other projects right now, but this is uh, within budget, and uh, we're recommending a low bid. Thank you. Discussion? Didn't we see a picture on MLive of a car driving down? We did. So uh, Spring Arbor Township added a connector along Teft, basically, that connects to the Falling Waters Trail. So um, there's now some boulders where the trail connects. There, there were not boulders when that occurred. Okay. One-time deal. Yeah, one-time deal, okay. hopefully. I need a motion and support. Move to recommend uh, approval of the plan to the full board. Support. Motion by Snell, support by Alexander. We proceed to vote. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed the same. Passes unanimously. One more park item for Q. Swains Lake, Vineyard Lake, boat ramps. Okay, so this was last discussed in February. That's when you all gave approval for uh, the fabrication of uh, two docks and the concrete planks for two boat launch projects. Uh, since then, we've issued a request for quotes to do the site work, basically, to install uh, and do the uh, corresponding site work at these two sites. 
we did uh, put this out to bid. We only received one bid, um, but it is um, within our budget, um, and it is a planned expense for for this year. So. Discussion. No discussion. Uh, motion support. What do we do with this? Move to recommend the project to the full board. Support. We have a motion of support by Snell, supported by Pulaski. I'll go to roll call vote. No, no, excuse me. Just go to a vote. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same. Passes unanimously. People, Vineyard Lake's going to love a vote launch. It isn't scary. <laughs> okay, one more parks item. Uh, Sparks Foundation County Park parking improvements. Yes, so we're looking for approval to make some parking improvements to the former lanes of uh, Brown and Randolph. Um, if you recall, um, we talked about this last fall. This came about when the city converted uh, those two four-lane roads into two-lane roads. So that actually, we looked at that as an opportunity to uh, turn those former roads into parking, which we definitely lack at the park there. And we've got a lot of new... Uh, new things upcoming with pickleball uh, uh, slated to go under construction sometime um, maybe this fall but more likely next year um, so we'll, we'll have a uh, need for parking there we've uh, we need some parking for the basketball court there as well as a new memorial area so this kind of uh, solves that and gets us about 60 parallel parking spots along the two uh, roads we put one portion of this uh, project out to bid uh, the other two remaining scope items were from existing contracts with uh, JC dot um, but the one uh, bid that we're looking for approval today is from uh, Dunnigan Brothers um, but the overall budget is um, it's 185 863 20 so we do have uh, 50,000 um, and a donation from the Cascades Park Foundation to go towards this discussion What are we going to do, board? Give me a motion and support to elsewhere. Support. Motion by Pulaski, support by Snell to approve this uh, parking improvement. Uh, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same. Passes unanimously. Great. Thank you. Well, everybody note that was item R. Uh, moving on to item five, other business. Uh, we have the claims. I see four signature. Rodney, we need yours yet. Uh, need a motion to pay the claims. I'll support. Motion by Alexander, support by Pulaski. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, pass this unanimously. People will get their money. We have no other minutes. Scheduled uh, next month is uh, month July. We have finance, and that's the only one we have listed so far. Public comment. Any public comment? Committee member comment. I'd like to. Uh, I understand where you guys are coming from, and uh, I'd like to thank you for working out something we can all both be happy with and Rick get his buildings fixed. Thank you. Can I? And, and thank you, Mr. Chair, for your indulgence in, in addressing um, the concerns of the committee members. Thank you very much, sir. Any other comments? Okay, meeting's adjourned. Thank you.